Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark, Mark Fusco, here for, no, it's not a special episode. It's here for another edition of Elite Wine TV. Wow, we're done with the special episodes. Finally. All right. So, um, not that I didn't enjoy doing them, but 12 episodes that are special in a row stop becoming special episodes, becoming the show. So, we're back. The set set up. I hope you enjoyed last week's show. Now, that was, you know, the whole um, how everything's done behind the scenes type of thing. And uh, if you haven't watched it, watch it if you're interested in it. It, it, it goes to the nuts and bolts. Um, I actually am going to record it after this show because I just recorded all the setup of how I do it. And hopefully the uh, Yakety Sax song is still in your head from a week ago. That would be the Benny Hill song. So um, <clears throat> unless I found a good substitute. I'm hoping I found a good substitute for that online. Anyway, uh, so we're going to get into some wine here. Finally get into some wine. And... Um, for the next, I don't know, three, four episodes probably, maybe five episodes. I don't know. I mean, I have fifteen bottles. It's not. It's not going to be seven total. It might be. It might be like five episodes. Um, we're going to be doing uh, some wines that I bought from the world. The world, from the Wall Street Journal. Now they do like a wine club type of thing. They. Um, I, I don't really know exactly how. How well. I don't know how it associates with the Wall Street Journal itself, other than they're just the same name. I'm sure it's owned by the same company. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's it's, it's a wine that they sell. Um, they they have they have regular sales throughout the year, but then they have like these quarterly things where you can buy a whole bunch of wine. So uh, a couple years ago, a friend of my dad's sent me an email saying, "Hey, do you think this is a good deal?" And I looked at it. I'm like, I don't know. I guess you know. I said, if you know, if you like that type of wine, it's probably going to be good wine. So then. Last November, December, uh, I get the email. I get the email, um, and it's like all this wine, 15 bottles. It's from pretty much all over. I think it's mostly Old World, though, if I can remember correctly. And um, so it was like, uh, what was it, $89.99. Now, this, I think, was the introductory offer because I haven't really taken them up on anything else since because, well, hopefully you saw during the setup I've got – over here, I've got the new wine cooler. I've had it for a little over a month now. Yeah, oh, yeah, right about five weeks because I got it right before Christmas, uh, and it's been holding steady. Um, I've got it. I mean, you can't you can't dial it direct exactly to a temperature, but you know through the little dial in the back, and I have a big huge thermometer in there. Um, I can get it to around 55 degrees. So the top row or two is around 55 degrees, and then when you get to the bottom, it's closer to like 48. So um, I have almost all red wines in there right now, but it'll be, it's great. It'd be, it's like having a two-zone cooler, really. And that's pretty much how refrigerators work anyway. The bottom part's going to be colder. It's not going to be precisely 55 degrees from top to bottom. So all these guys that have these reviews, it's not 55 degrees. You're idiots. Anyway, um, but it's been holding steady. It's only been five weeks. Haven't had any big issues. The, the reviews on Amazon says something about lar- loud pops. My dad said it makes some noise. I haven't really heard any noise. I mean, you during the little setup, it, it's probably so fast you probably couldn't tell, but the lights dimmed every once in a while when the compressor went on. This is not a thermoelectric. I'll do a full review of it. It's a real freezer. I mean, refrigerator. Anyway, so uh, it's $89.99 plus $7.42 for shipping. So um, whatever that comes out to be, $96, bucks, $97, right? Uh, for 15 bottles. Now, the retail price of these wines is about 245 bucks. Um, so, yeah, I got a bunch of wines for really cheap. <clears throat> um, and uh, many of these wines can only be found on Lathwaite's website. Now, Lathwaite is out of England, but they have an American, they have a United States website. So you can buy the wines from them if you live in the United States and ship to, I don't know, it's like 15 or 20 states that they can ship to. Um 
And the distributor, at least for these two, and I think for almost all the wines, is Lionstone International. Um, I think I think this one, they, oh, I have them backwards how I want to do them. Um, I think this one here, the uh, Corsietto, I think is still on the website. Or no, no, it's the, the Moik's is the one you still see on the website that the uh, Corsietto I couldn't find on Lions. Lions on the website, which is kind of funny because this is a 2013. So, um, but anyway, so some deal, Wall Street Journal, Lathwaite, they're probably connected somehow. I didn't go too far deep into trying to figure out their connection, but they, they obviously are getting the, the wines from the same source. And um, I can't really find these wines anywhere else, at least on a retail side. When you go to Wine Searcher, Lathwaite is what comes up. So um, a lot of times these wines that have small distribution go to small wine shops and not like the big box stores. But um, my guess is that Wall Street Journal and Lathwaite is pretty much two of the two of them have the entire allocation for most of these wines. All right, so, um, so that only took five minutes. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get right into the wine. So the first wine tonight, or today, or this week, <clears throat> Looks like it's a little bright. I'll probably fix it in the mix. Uh, this is the 2013 Costiero Nero, Nero di Troia, from Italia, from Italy, right? And um, so anyway, um, Nero di Troia, or it's also known as Uva di Troia, which is pretty much the official name in Italy. Um, this wine comes from the Apulia or Puglia area, or Puglia, if you're going to sound like American, um, area of Italy. Now, that's that little area right here uh, on the heel, you know, that back part, the back part of the boot and the heel, the boot. Um, so uh, it comes from that area. Um, the grape variety is, um, well, I'll give you, it's also um, in Apulia and the areas of Andrea and Berlata and in the province of Bari. Now, the name probably derives, this is all from Wikipedia right here, the, way, the, the, the name probably derives from the town of Troia in the province of Foggia, the legendary founder of which was the Greek hero Diomedes, after he destroyed ancient Troy. Go Greeks. Anyway, um, and then uh, they, they also in Wikipedia, they just say the vine is, the vine is fairly vigorous. Um, it, it basically can handle the weather, the heat, the climate in Apulia. It gets pretty hot and nasty there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's talk about the wine itself. Now, it's made by a guy named Mario uh, Ercolino. Um, he's, I guess, well known, but when you look him up, he's he, this this comes up, and the other wine I guess he's really known for from Sicily <clears throat> is called. Um, Sassarello is called, it's known as a super Sicilian. So it's made in the super Tuscan style um, with Sangiovese, Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot. Um, it's a Sicilian IGT uh, wine. Now, um, they say that the name Cosiero Nero means black charger, like the trusty steed on the label. There's a, there's a, you know, there's a horse on the label. I did see it before. Um, and uh, it goes through the tasting notes. I won't go through all that. It says it should be paired with grilled sirloin, roasted pork belly, and fennel. Okay, full flavor cheeses. It's aged three months in fine French oak. So not a lot of oak, um, not a lot of oak treatment to it. <clears throat> it's 2013, so came out in 2014. So at best, you know, it it. it you know, it's a year old, okay? The uh, thing just went on. I know that when I did the Christmas Eve and the New Year's Eve episodes, I had the cooler, and it's kind of funny because even though it's really not that loud, and, you know, the AC turns on, the, the refrigerator turns on the back, the microphone picks all this stuff up. Oh, t yeah, I did start it. So I'm going to make sure, though. <laughs> so even though it's kind of quiet, the microphone really picks it up, so it's kind of loud, as far as microphones are, are concerned. So um, it helps to have some of this noise reduction software, um, like I talked about last week. <clears throat> all right, so enough of that. Let's get right into the wine. You know, my voice has been pretty good all day. Now it's all scratchy and gravelly and, and all that stuff. All I can say is the allergies I was suffering during the Christmas and New Year's episode, and then after that, which was horrible. 
I mean, it was really bad for like three weeks. Um, it's finally done. Um, thank goodness, because when I did the uh, interview with Brian, did you watch that episode with Brian and Rick Ramos? Brian Page, too. Um, <laughs> if you haven't watched that one, it's a lot of fun, and it is R-rated. I had a lot of fun making that. And we had, me and Brian, we had a really good time afterwards um, going to Mitiada in El Mercado. Um, margaritas, mariachis, and appetizers, nachos, and uh, queso, and all, all great stuff. Now, this is not a one I'd pair with that. It's got a bit of uh, minerality or earthiness to it. Almost a little bit of, quote, funk. It, to me, is not fruit forward. When I pull my nose out a little bit more, I get more of the dustiness, <clears throat> earthiness out of it. Because I know it's an Italian wine, I'm picking up some of that accordion case, but I think I'm really trying to fit it into that. It's really very faint. It's more about dust rather than the whole leather and felt stuff. And it's really, you know, pretty, pretty minimal. We'll try the Israeli. That really intensified the dustiness, the, the leather and felt. But again, I don't really get any, <clears throat> don't get a lot of floral, only any floral. I don't really, really, really get a lot of fruit. Um, as far as oak, it, even though it's three months in French oak, it doesn't say new, it doesn't say old. Um, it doesn't seem like it has the typical aromas that oak is going to impart. And what I mean by the funk, it's not really like, you know, not, it's not manure. It's just, it really is like musty. But not wet cardboard or, you know, wet dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's get the next <clears throat> taste out of it. Basically, I would not mistake this for an Italian wine. Now, with that said, it's got some real tartness to it, um, like a um, <clears throat> like a sour, um, kind of like a sour cherry candy. Okay, um, it's got it's it has that total accordion case quality to it. It's a little hot. I mean, I can really feel the alcohol coming up from the chest. <clears throat> so my guess is we're, we're getting probably in that 15% range. It is Southern Italy, especially Apulia. They, depending on when they pick the grapes. Um, I thought I saw somewhere that this is actually an early ripening grape. Um, so it's, it's, it could be, it could get pretty ripe pretty quick, which means high sugar, which means high alcohol when it's fermented dry. And <clears throat> survey says, must be on the back somewhere. Wow. Let's try that again. I'm not going to tell you what the alcohol is yet. <clears throat> I'll just say I was surprised. Now on the nose. Remember, sometimes the second pour gives you a little bit more I'm getting a little smoked barbecue meat. <clears throat> Not the smoke itself, but the meat. And there is, there is kind of a, a, a floral, almost scented candle quality to it. Like, like you walked into a shop of scented candles. <clears throat> like the whole funk. So that might have been like the sulfur blowing off. It almost smells like a different wine. So, 
the fruit's still there. It's not as tart cherry, but I've got some cherry. Some other kind of red fruits, <clears throat> the, um, the accordion case quality is there a little bit, but it's looking a little more fruity than it was on the, the first pour. Because remember, sometimes first pours aren't really the best pour to use. I almost dumped it out, but I was like, nah, it's a fresh glass. But the alcohol, I don't really get so much. Now, again, that could have been first sip. Even though I didn't really, sw I swallowed a little bit. Um, that first sip might have been just the alcohol kind of hitting the body because I don't think it's very high alcohol at all. Let's swallow it. No, not at all. So, my initial thought of 15%-ish alcohol, way off. It's 13%. Now that I'm drinking it, I get that. It's calmed down. It's not so... It's actually... I mean, I actually would think it was a little bit under 13% alcohol. Um, I don't really get the alcohol. Um, acidity is high. My mouth is watering. So, high acid. Um, low, not low alcohol, but not high alcohol. 13% you know, medium. Um... Good, good fruit, but nothing, nothing fruit bombish. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's a balance between fruit and earthiness, but neither one is really like, it's like quiet. So there's a balance between the two, but you don't really hear it. Kind of a little more volume to it. Now I have no idea if the compressor limiter that I do really allowed me to, really allowed that that to to get the effect I wanted on that. But the point is. Um, it's actually almost quaffable, okay? It's something that I probably could drink just straight on its own. Food always makes wine better, usually, okay? If it's a good wine, it, it makes the experience better. But, you know, it's, 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 okay. it's okay. Now, is this, some, is this stellar? No, but it's, a, what, a $13 bottle of wine? It drinks like a $13 bottle of wine. Uh, you might, I might even say if I paid 15 for it, I'd be fine. If I was paying 20 for it, I'd be like, uh, maybe not. So, I mean, for the value that it is, for the, for the, for the retail value it is, and considering I got 15 bottles for a little over $90, you know, this bottle, and it cost me, what, like five bucks? I don't, I don't even do the math on it. I don't even do the math on it. You know, was it $97 divided by 15 bottles, $6.46. So yeah, $6, seven, seven bucks for this wine, that's an excellent value. So yeah. If for some reason you are somewhere that has this particular wine um, and it's 13 bucks or under, maybe 10 bucks, 11 bucks, it's a good buy. If it's above $13, there's probably other wines out there that are from this grape, might be hard to find them though. So if you want to experience this grape, I say buy it. But if there's others out there, they might, I don't know, they might be a better deal, they may not be. But it's not a bad wine. It's not bad, it's not poorly made, it's well made. It's just, I kind of wish there was a little bit more to it because it felt a little light. Um, it's medium minus body, the fruit's a little muted, the earthiness is a little muted, it's, it's there. And now granted, I did just pull it out of the cooler. Like if you were watching the, the if you watched the setup from last week, you saw me go to the cooler and I opened it and then within like a few minutes I started recording this. So it, it's not, you know, it's at 55 degrees, it's probably closer to 60, which is closer to true serving temperature. So let's, let's give it another shot because when it's cooler, things are more muted. I'm trying to do that more often instead of just strictly room temperature. I mean, the aroma is good <clears throat> I, and it changed after the first pour. It's got a little more body to it. It's warming up. So for 13 bucks, it's a good value. All right, so let's move on to wine number dos. All right, so wine number two. Now this wine, I'm really excited to try. Let me give you a little, hopefully brief backstory on this. So this wine is, um, we'll just say what it is right now. It's the JP, the 2010 JP as in, what, Jean-Pierre? 
you know what? <laughs> I think it was Jean-Pierre. I don't think it was Jean-Paul. Uh, Moik's uh, Bordeaux Reserve. I forgot to put that. Private Reserve stuff in my notes. It's um, on, again, Lathwaite's. Um, it's $19.99. So I realized that I got a $20 bottle of wine for $6.50. Okay. So, um, so typically $19.99 uh, retail. I don't know what that is in pounds, but I'm sure it's pretty, you know, I'm sure the, uh, the conversion worked out. Um, <clears throat> so I'll give you a little backstory on who these guys are. So, um, for, I'll just straight up read it from the, from the, uh, from the website for 38 years, depending on when they wrote this, but, uh, Christian Weiss has, was in charge of Chateau Petrus, perhaps the most sought after Bordeaux of all, arguably. Okay. Um, $3,000 a bottle ish. Um, so they said, thanks to the long friendship with the Moix family, they're you're invited to enjoy his private reserve Bordeaux from the Blockbuster 2010 vintage. I've been hearing some good stuff about 2010, so I'm excited about trying some 2010. Uh, 2009 vintage is considered to be like epic. Everyone thought 2005 was great. 2009, uh, and, and I don't think I've had a 2009 as far as I know, um, is considered like um, like a vintage of, of, of the century type of thing. It's like epic. Um 2010 set new records for riches and color. Um, blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's let's get into let's get into this. Um, so so they've been they've been involved in this in, in a lot of stuff. So the Moix family um, on on the JP side is uh, involved in uh, distribution. Um, they own some other chateaus. Um, negotiant type of stuff. They're pretty. They're pretty important. In 2011, I went to Bordeaux and I went to Saint Emilion, and um, I went to Chateau Von Roque, which um, uh, is run by Alan Moix. Now, I, I I didn't quite remember what his he he's related. I don't know if he's like a brother, a um, nephew, whatever, but he is part of the family. Okay. Um, so they, um, I thought I had this on here, but I guess not. So Fon Roque was bought, oh yeah, was bought by, by Jean Moix, um, who was the father of JP in 1930. Um, and then it passed down to JP, and then it passed to, not Christian, somebody else. And then, then it just, if Wikipedia doesn't really say, and, and the Fon Roque website doesn't exactly say how Alan became involved in it but um in the 2000s he started he started running it along with Maisers uh Chateau Maisers so um so they're they're a pretty big family they also own fun little fact Dominus in Napa if you didn't know that you know that now all right so <clears throat> let's get with this uh you know what the there was nowhere it said what what was in this wine uh Jean-Pierre not Jean-Paul Jean-Pierre Moix I see I knew that not John Paul. Well, Pierre. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, it doesn't say what's in it, but it says just Bordeaux. So it could be anything of the Bordeaux varietals. Um, knowing their history and having right bank chateaus, mostly, um, it's most likely the dominant grape is probably Merlot. doesn't mean it's over 50%. It just means it may be the highest percentage grape is Merlot. I'm kind of looking forward to it being that. It could be a cab, it could be cab, it could be whatever cab franc. Um, but right banks tend to be more low cab franc um, with some you know, cabernet sauvignon. Whereas left bank tends to be more cabernet sauvignon is is the main player with merlot and then maybe some cab franc and then of course you got petit verdot blah blah blah. All right, so um, let's uh, let's check it out. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked to try this out because yeah, there was no way it said what what the grapes are in this. Clean uh, fruit. Definitely get the fruit off of this. It's it smells fresh. Like, I know it's a 2010, but it smells fresh. Okay, it's 2010, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Um, I mean, it kind of, it kind of smells like a winery. That's how fresh it smells. Okay. 
I mean, you can smell the you know the concrete and the the steel tanks and you know the, the in in the air with with you know the the fermentation happening, right? So what that's, what I'm telling you is it smells clean. There's a minerality to it. Um, Raspberry-ish, you know, brighter red fruits, um, with raspberry being the dominant dominant fruit to me. I don't really smell too much oak influence, and I don't really smell. There's maybe maybe a little bit of floral to it, but oak influence I don't really get. Tannin is definitely bigger than, than the first wine. Um, really coats the mouth. Acidity, I call it medium plus, almost high. Mouth is really watering. Um, the uh, the tannins, I, I'm going to say medium plus. Um, this is not a medium. It, it's the body is medium, but but the tannins are kind of big. Not big, but you know, a little high, a little, a little up there. The acid's really up there. I still get that clean uh, raspberry flavor. There was a little bit of a bramble to it. There's a little bit of bramble to it. A little bit of tartness to it. I really feel like I need some some food to really counteract that acid and that tannin. Um, whereas the other one I could just drink on its own. Um, so I think food definitely would, would help out a little bit with it. Um, let's see what they say. Plum, black currant, licorice, clove. Okay, I get the clove. Um, it says on the palate, smooth, well balanced, dark berry fruits and a classic minerality character. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> really shine with decanting 36 30 to 60 minutes lamb tenderloin firm cheeses isn't that what they said about the other one i think they did or maybe i read that ahead of time and and, and it, it came came to me see the other one they talked about blackberry violet smoky vanilla and oak yeah sure but i can tell you i mean this is good i mean i don't know about the plum Maybe. I don't I don't see the current, I don't see the licorice, but the clove I can get that. It's good. I mean it's a twenty dollar bottle of wine. It really needs food. You really need to have something and I can see the lamb for sure with this. Um, see I thought I saw some oh yeah, roast pork with and fennel, that's what it was. But I can see lamb and some and some good like rosemary with it, okay? Or fennel, okay? I can see something like that with it. I think that'd be great. Tenderloin, I think it would go good. Um, more like a filet rather than a, uh, rather than um, if we went different part of the cow with the ribeye. Um, I don't see the ribeye being, you know, because I think the ribeye might be a little too powerful for it. Um, even though it's it's got some good tannins, it's got some good acid. Um, the the that thick of a steak or that that not thick, but that juicy or that flavorful of a steak might be a little bit too much. Um, Cheeses for sure. Definitely cheeses. I could do this grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup, which I had earlier this week. That was good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, so, if you see it, it's 20 bucks. It's worth the $20. Um, again, I don't know how easy it is to find outside of the Wall Street Journal stuff in Lathwaite's um, because when I, did, when I did searches for it, that's pretty much all that came up was, was Lathwaite's uh, or like Wine Search or Vivino because somebody got it and put it on the little app. The Vivino app, by the way, is pretty cool. I like it a lot. 
Um, haven't tried the whole wine list scanning of it, um, but I'm hoping to try that sometime. Um, but good wine. If you can find it, definitely get it. I'm looking forward to uh, drinking these wines over the next few days. Uh, I'm really enjoying them. All right, so um, that's going to do it for today's show. Um, as always, thank you for thank you for watching, um, especially all those special episodes. Um, if, if you know last episode wasn't your cup of tea, I understand that. It's really meant f for the people that really want to geek out and know what I do and how everything's set up. Um, and uh, sometimes people just like to know how the sausage is made. Okay. Um, Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching the past few weeks uh, or, or three months with the special episodes. I've had a lot of fun making them. Um, I'm excited to get back into doing regular wine reviews and uh, anything else that comes along. Um, and uh, as always, friend me up on the links above. Hit the link over there. Send me a few ducats, some dollars. That was for you, Rick, if you're watching. Um, anyway, uh, send a few ducats my way. And... Um, that's going to do it. We'll see everyone again next time.